What's up, Bills Mafia? Today, we're going to be going over the players whose stock went up and whose stock went down following the Bills' loss to the Pittsburgh Steelers in week two of the preseason. But before we get to that, let's get to that intro. Welcome to the Mafia Sports Report. I am Tommy. Please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell because I always forget to tell you. Well, Bills Mafia, today we're going to be going over the players whose stock went up and whose stock went down following that terrible, ugly preseason loss to the Pittsburgh Steelers this Saturday. Um, guys, real quick, I do want to say stock up for the Mafia Sports Report channel because we did recently hit. 5,000 subscribers, and my God, what an off-season this channel has had, and I want to say thank you for everyone that's shown their support and love uh, to this channel. Uh, we couldn't be here, obviously, without you, so a special shout-out to all of Bill's Mafia who have subscribed um, and just, uh, uh, you know, sh like I said, shown us love uh, since we started this way back in 2020, so that's a special shout-out. Now, let's get to the nitty-gritty, um, and that is the Buffalo Bills, so Real quick, special shout out to Bill's Wire once again for writing this article. And of course, I'm going to have my own extras stock up, stock down uh, for this game. So let's go ahead and start. All right, here we go. First player, stock down, Matt Barkley. It says, after a solid performance in week one of the preseason, Barkley had an awful day. He threw three picks and on just 12 passes. The game against the Steelers seemed like the kind of day that went wrong for multiple people, including Barkley. Yes, and I told you guys, and I warned you guys last week, hold your horses. Calm down on Matt Barkley being number two. Yes, he looked good last week versus the threes and the fours. But I know Matt Barkley. I've seen Matt Barkley play. There's a reason why he's been a backup, a journeyman backup in the NFL for years right? Or a third stringer. Like he, he, he's very limited. He's, you know, doesn't have a very good arm, right? He's a great guy, smart guy, probably going to be a, a quarterback coach in the future, possibly. Um, but a backup quarterback, a guy you can rely on for, you know, some time. No. I, and I said this last year and, and, uh, you know, they went out and got Keenum, which wasn't an answer either. I thought it, I thought it could be better than Barkley, but um, same with this season with, with Kyle Allen. Um, it's one of those things where it's like, uh, the bills need to find a decent backup quarterback and have him here a couple years. Uh, and that may be through the draft. Um, but right now it is what it is. And I think Barkley after this performance, um, he probably lost that, that opportunity to be backup, um, entering, uh, this year, this season. So, um, it was just a poor performance. He was throwing passes uh, that he shouldn't have, um, trying to throw in tight windows when he just doesn't have the arm to do it. Um, the lob pass that was picked off was an awful, awful pass. Um, he just made some poor, poor decisions. And really, it came down to his arm. Poor decisions with his arm, right? Um, he probably – listen, Josh Allen probably going to squeeze that ball in there uh, with his first interception. Uh, but he's not Josh Allen, right? Um, the lob pass, the guy was open for a second, but he just doesn't have the arm to get it there in time. Um, so maybe his thinking was right, but his execution was was off because he's just limited uh, with his arm. You know, limited really all around. He's he's not he's a pocket passer. He can't really move around the pocket too well either. So not a guy I would feel comfortable with uh, if if we needed a, a backup to come in. Uh, for a few games, I just I just would not trust Matt Barkley, um, and I really honestly wouldn't even trust Kyle Allen. But uh, yeah, he played a lot better this game. But 
Let's move. Let's move forward. Okay. On uh, number two, stock up. Okay. Latavius Murray, who, by the way, they had stock down last week, and I totally disagreed with that. I thought he played very well last week. Uh, but let's see what they say. Murray gets some love for this game as he didn't have a monster performance, but he was solid on the ground. With the way that Buffalo struggled to get anything going on the offensive end, it was nice to know that Murray could run the ball and keep possessions alive. Um, I agree. Listen, man, Murray's been a bright spot to this team, and I'm, I'm very, very happy they signed Latavius Murray. Um, yes, he's an older running back. I think he is now the oldest running back in the NFL, um, but I still think he has a lot of juice in the tank, and I think a lot of people are overlooking Latavius Murray and what he can do um, you know, for this team. Um, listen. I told you guys when we signed Damian Harris, it was going to be, you know, cross your fingers because he has a track history of injuries. And sure enough, he's already hurt, right? And we're not even in week one. We haven't even started. He hasn't even played a preseason game, right? So it worries me. It worried me the day we signed Damian Harris. It worries me still. And thank God they went and signed a veteran who's been relatively healthy in his career, Latavius Murray who I feel uh, is going to be RB2. I think he's earned it. I think he looks good. Um, he, he still has some, like I said, he still has some juice in the tank. He still has some good speed. Um, I like him, man. I do. I do. Let's just hope he nothing bad happens to him because I think really the Bills uh, need to then go out and address uh, the running back position. Again, go get a solid number two somewhere. I don't know where. Off the street somewhere. I don't know if they're even available at this point, but uh, let's just hope that uh, Damian Harris can get back to being healthy, stay healthy, and uh, Latavius Murray can continue, uh, you know, doing what he's doing so far in camp and in preseason. So I agree with the stock up on that this week for him. Uh, stock up, uh, Darrington Evans running back as well. Uh, Darrington Evans was brought to Buffalo after Naeem Hines was ruled out for the rest of the season. So far, Evans has made a solid case to be the backup to James Cook, and Evans was another guy who put forth a solid effort running the football. I don't agree with that, okay? I, I get the stocks up, but I, I, he's not going to be a James Cook backup. I'm sorry. Um, I kind of like him in the kick return game a little bit better than that, uh, but I don't think he makes this team. I just don't. I, in no way he's going to back up James Cook unless they feel unless they feel Harris cannot stay healthy or they're, they're worried, then I guess I could see him being making the team and, and then Harris gets cut. I get I I just don't see that happening, guys. But hey, it's not my article, but shout out, like I said, to Bill's Wireman. They make great articles. So uh next on this list, go ahead and pop this up. Stock up, tight end, Dalton Kincaid. Yes, finally got an opportunity this week. Kincaid had more snaps in his second preseason game, and he showed that he's ready to play amongst the starters come week one. Amassing three catches and 45 yards on four targets against Pittsburgh. Kincaid showed that he may be the missing piece to the passing game that Buffalo has been looking for. Um, I agree, man. Kincaid is everything they said he was uh, all through training camp. Um, we didn't obviously get to see him week one because I think the week one game plan was a little bit different than week two. Week two is more uh, for the ones that kind of showcase the rookies a little bit in the passing game. Um, and Kincaid answered the bell. Kincaid was one of the few bright spots uh, for the Buffalo Bills on Saturday, and he looked really, really good. I cannot wait. Uh, you know, for this season to start already um, because he's going to show a lot of people why the Buffalo Bills traded up to get him. Um, I think this dude is going to be a star in the league. And I, I just, I just cannot wait to see this guy's growth, um, uh, you know, this season. So yeah, definitely uh, stock up for Kincaid. Uh, next on this list, we got stock up Kyle Allen. Yeah. I got to give him credit. Play better. Uh, Allen had quite the performance against the Steelers as he was the, Antheus, Antheus, geez, I can't even say that, of Barkley in this one. Allen finished with 120 passer rating and looked to be in command of the offense during his time on the field. I agree. He had good stats. Listen, I think he was, let me go to it real quick. He was uh, 12 of 15 for 112 yards and a touchdown. He had a quarterback rating of 120. Very, very similar numbers to um, Matt Barkley week one, right? Very close. Um, and listen, but once again, just like last week, Barkley going against threes and fours, guess who's going against threes and fours this week? Well, Kyle Allen and Matt Barkley had to go against the twos, uh, and, and the threes, uh, and listen, Pittsburgh's no joke, right? Pittsburgh has a deep, uh, team. They have a good defense as, as far as defense goes. 
they're they're not easy. They're not an easy team to go against. And with our offensive line struggles there too, Barkley had a tough tough go at it. Uh, but I would say some of those mistakes were were were. <laughs> I would say three of the four mistakes were on Barkley. I thought the uh, one of the mistakes weren't on it wasn't on him. I, I believe it was the uh, fumble. Um, but other than that, you know, the, the interceptions were all on him, in my opinion. Um, but Kyle Allen going against threes and fours, yeah, he looked good. But so did Barkley last week. So once again, it doesn't really tell me it doesn't show me that he can be a quality number two it just doesn't he hasn't done anything yet to, to prove that but i just think right now uh sean mcdermott has no choice you gotta you, you gotta pick one and i listen if i'm mcdermott i'm going with the younger kyle allen uh he has a better arm than barkley he can move around the pocket better than barkley it is what it is, guys. At this point, you got to go with the younger guy. And, and I'm going with Kyle Allen as backup just because of those things I just said. So uh, Kyle Allen, stock up. I agree with that. He had a better performance this week. Uh, stock up, defensive end, Gregory Rousseau. you damn right, Gregory Rousseau. So Rousseau is one of the bright spots for the Bills' defense. Uh, he was all over the field in this one. He was one of the players that Buffalo will be counting on if it, if it is to make the Super Bowl, uh, make a Super Bowl. So – I agree, man. Rousseau, and I told you guys uh, all offseason, I expect 10-plus sacks from Rousseau this season. Um, I think this dude is continuing to grow, um, get better, get faster, um, and the offensive lines are going to have a problem against Rousseau this season, especially when uh, Von Miller gets back and the whole unit is is, is back on the field um, as one. I think Rousseau uh, – I think this defense is going to cause – some really some nightmares for some offensive lines once everyone's healthy on the field together. Um, you know, Floyd, Von Miller, um, uh, Rousseau, Ed Oliver, you know, um, it's gonna cause some fits on that line. You Puna Ford, uh, so yeah, just I, I can't wait for everyone to be on, on, you know, on the field at the same time. Uh, Von, I expect to be back probably week six, week five, week six. I'm gonna say week six, uh, after that Jags game in London, I think he'll return. Uh, but we, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, Gregory Rousseau, man, uh, definitely stock up. He 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 played fast, played physical this game. Got after the quarterback. He had a strip sack, um, but uh, Trubisky got the ball back. But it was an excellent play by Rousseau. Didn't fall for the fake. It was right on uh, Trubisky. So yeah, definitely stock up uh, for Rousseau. So let's go to the next guy, and there is no next guy. So <laughs> I got my list, guys. So. My stock up, and I'm going to go over it right now for you guys, is, so, stock up. I got Osiris Torrance, okay? Uh, so, first of all, Osiris Torrance, I'm going to tell you all right now, and I've been saying it all season. I said it before we even drafted the guy, right? I was all on board with drafting Osiris Torrance in the first round, by the way. Uh, I was screaming on Twitter, the Bills need to do what they have to do, right? They got to do whatever they got to do to go get Osiris Torrance in this draft because he is that dude, right? And a lot of people are like, oh, no, no, Osiris Torrance doesn't fit this team, doesn't fit this old line. Uh, what are you talking about? This guy's one of the best guards in the in college. He could fit anywhere, okay? Uh, and we need offensive linemen bad. We need a right guard bad. And listen, this is no shade on Ryan Bates, but Ryan Bates is average at best. At that position. I, and I love Ryan Bates. Ryan Bates could fill in anywhere. And he probably will be our future center. And I'm cool with that. But he is not a starting right guard in the NFL, in my opinion. He's a great rotational guy. Great guy to have in the wings, right? Never know. But, no. We needed a younger, meaner, bigger, physical guard. And we went and got it in the second round. We got lucky as shit to get Osiris Torrance in the second round. Okay? Um, and I'm going to say right now. First two preseasons game, he's had, I think, the most snap count on the line, and he's looked the best out of everybody. And that is including – that's including Deion Dawkins. That includes McGovern. That includes Bates, Brown, everybody. He's looked the best. I saw no penalties against him. He's moving the, moving the line around. He's helping out. Run blocking is excellent. Pass blocking looks very good. He's the real dude. He's the real dude. He's the truth. 
And y'all should be really happy that we have him. And I swear to God, guys, if he does not, uh, if he's not the right guard to start week one, starting right guard, I'm going to, I'm going to blow up. I'm going to do a video where it's going to be epic because there's no way in hell you can't start this guy week one. I, I, I would lose my shit. I, I really would. So um, and I just can't see it happening. I think, listen, I think for the for those first two games, they wanted to see what they got, and that's why they left them in there longer than most of the linemen. I think all of the linemen. And I think he proved to everyone that he can handle that and more. And, yeah, listen, week three, by the way, if people are asking me, should we start, should we start uh, the starters? Should we sit or start them? Uh, sit them, sit all of them, including Torrance, because right now we cannot afford another injury, especially on the offensive line. I don't want to see Allen. I don't want to see Torrance. I don't want to see Diggs. I don't want to see Gabe Davis. I don't want to see Kincaid. I don't want to see any starter. I'm going to be dead honest with you guys at this point. You know what you do with the starters? You prepare them for the Jets. You start preparing them for the Jets. You get that. You get them in the in the in the uh, film room, right? You get you 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 work on the penalties, right? That's what I want for the next couple weeks, right? Right? Not a preseason game. I don't need to see them against the Bears. I'm sorry, where Torrance gets rolled up on or something stupid. Allen gets hurt, right? Because our offensive line can't hold. Whatever. Yeah, I'm just saying. So no, I don't want to see any of that. Just. They could sit, all of them. Start the start the guys who are trying to earn a spot on this team, okay? Or on a practice squad, whatever. But no. So anyways, let me continue with my list. Stock up, Ryan Van, uh, Van Denmark. Yeah, listen, definitely. At left tackle, filling in for Deion Dawkins, who, by the way, uh, I'm going to get to you later, uh, play bad. And I thought, I thought this is second week in a row that Ryan uh, Van Denmark has looked damn good at left tackle. Right tackle, eh, not so much. But left tackle, yeah, he's, he's, he's shown that he can do, he can be that guy. And right now, I'm comfortable with him making the 53. The way he's played, yes, I'm good with that. All right, so uh, another stock up. Justin Shorter. Um, yeah, Justin Shorter. So, listen, Justin Shorter uh, in this game it was one of the bright spots, uh, you know, except for Kincaid uh, receiving. So, he had five receptions, 47 yards, and a touchdown. He looked very good. Now, mind you, going against threes and fours, but we know this is a project player, right? Um, we know this is a guy that's that's fighting for to be on the 53. I have a feeling he's going to make the 53 because he can play special teams, but there's, I think they're intrigued with him. I think this is a guy that um, could potentially be a player that that's on, you know, that's part of the offense um, in a year or two, and you know, wind up being a steal. Um, depending on his work ethic, depending on how you know his health, can he stay? Can he? Can he? You know, keep from being stop being from being injured, right? Which of course can't prevent that. It's, it happens, but the injury bug has kind of followed him. If he can stay healthy in the NFL and he can work on his craft, it's very possible that Justin Shorter winds up being part of this offense in a, in a year or two. Uh, but I like what I saw against the Steelers um, this Saturday. 100%. He was one of the bright spots late in the game. Um, he was still playing playing hard. So, yeah, definitely uh, stock up for uh, Justin Shorter. Uh, my other, Connor McGovern, left guard. Um, I thought Connor McGovern, uh, I don't, I didn't think he played excellent, but I thought he played pretty good. And, uh, you know, Saturday I would say was between him and Torrance were the best offensive line in Van Denmark on, uh, the field. Um, I, I just, I, so far two weeks in a row, I, I think he's held his own, um, made a couple mistakes that he can clean up. Right. But so far it's looking like a good signing, right. Unlike Saffold last year who just was uh just terrible um but so far I i've liked what i've seen from mcgovern so yeah stock up for uh connor mcgovern now stock down all right let's do it first one tyrell dotson 
I made a video on this, guys. I told you. Not the answer. Not the answer at middle linebacker. I cannot believe they even rolled the dice on Dotson uh, in the offseason where, where Bean was like, hey, I'm comfortable with Dotson being the guy week one. If, if You know, right now he's the, you know, he's leading the, the, the pack uh, as far as middle linebackers go, but it's competition, but we'll see. But right now we like what we see from Dotson, blah, 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 blah. Um, I don't know what, what they saw because what I saw last year when he filled in was a guy who was bad at pass coverage and a reason why they brought, brought back A.J. Klein last season. I saw no. I didn't see a guy that could be a starting middle linebacker in the NFL in Dodson. What were they What were they seeing? I, I have no idea what they were seeing. They brought back Klein again to compete. Klein, come on, man. He's limited too. Bad pass coverage, right? And then you got Bernard, who had no – didn't even do anything last season. Didn't even get any reps. I, mean, I don't remember. I think he got a few reps at middle linebacker last season. Very few. But other than that, I saw nothing in his 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 growth that could that that told me, uh, man, yeah, he could be that guy. Inspector is intriguing, but once again, a guy that has limited experience, right? He's a rookie last year, didn't really get any playing time, really, except for preseason last season. And this year he got hurt early on. So we're listen, middle linebacker, big problem, big, big problem. And I think I hope that Bean and McDermott see this so much. By the way, Dotson was such a problem against the Steelers that he got pulled. He got pulled early for Klein. And then he went back against the threes and the fours later in the game. I think he's a player that could be cut. I'm going to be honest with you. Listen, training camp's been a disaster, in my opinion, for him. He's been in multiple fights. He hasn't he, he hasn't done anything to show him that he could be the starting middle linebacker, in my opinion. That's two preseason games in a row, right? Um, I, I just I, I don't see it. But they can't cut him until they find a, a, somebody else. Because now if you cut him, now we're just down to Klein and Inspector and Bernard. Yeah, it's a problem. And what we got to hope for and got to cross our fingers for is when teams make the final cuts, that there's some good veteran out there, a decent veteran that they can scoop up, grab up real quick, get on that playbook, learn the defense and have them go week one. I know Kyle Van Noy's out there. I know he's older. I think I feel more comfortable with him than Klein. I'm just saying, but you know, that's just one name, but there's going to be guys. Trust me. There's going to be guys that are waived, uh, that are quality veterans in this league. I just hope being, I hope Bean and McDermott are realizing now that, um, Dotson is not the answer that Bernard is not going to be the answer. And that Klein is very, very limited. Oh, such a problem guys. All right. Anyways, let me go back to this, uh, stock down. Kair Elam, man, Kair, what is going on, bro? Um, I love his physicality. I do, but he's way too handsy, man. He gets called for so many PIs, man. Um, he gets called for him in camp, guys. This isn't like, oh, the refs are picking on Kair Elam. No, man, it's been a problem in camp as well. So much that last season when he was a rookie, they made him wear boxing gloves. To, to try to help him out from not holding. And then this season, he's doing it again in camp so much that Diggs is getting up in his grill. Doris is going over there telling him, what are you doing? Not good. And he's a first-round pick. And I have faith. Listen, I'm not done, and I'm not, I'm not over Kyer Elam. I'm not saying cut him or trade him. But right now, he's struggling. He's struggling big time. And... And right now, Dane Jackson has taken that lead for CB2, in my opinion. And he's going to be a CB2. Start of week one. I'm telling you right now, he, he's going to be. You can't, listen, you cannot have penalties, pass interference um, throughout a game and, and get chunk yards like that. You, you can't do it. And uh, he's having a major problem with that. Boneheaded mistakes. I don't know. He, he needs to continue to, um, you know, work with the coaches. 
and and prove that right figure it out but yeah stock down because i, I he, he had another bad game i i didn't think last week he played good either i gotta be honest with you guys so uh kyrie Gillum, stock down uh aj epinesa stock down as well a epinesa had a good week last week this week versus steelers nah, nowhere to be found making dumb mistakes out of place the run that went 60 something yards aj klein out of place Went the wrong way, right? Got got just I don't I don't know where he was at, right? Got caught up out of place. Um, and it's not good. Uh, didn't make any noise as far as getting after the quarterback either. Quiet day for him, made a mistake in the in, like I said, in that the 65 yard run, uh, being out of place. Um, shot up the middle when he should have shot went out the outside gap or whatever. Um yeah, just just uh, not not happy with Epinesa's play Saturday. Um, but I think he'll get to redeem himself against the Bears. He'll be a player that that's out there, in my opinion. Um, he needs that's a player that needs to be out there because he needs to continue to work on his craft as well. Because I thought last year, like I said, I think he took a step, but I didn't think it was a major step. I think it was a it was a step forward, but, but it wasn't a giant. It wasn't a Gregory Rousseau, you know huge ass step forward right i leap forward uh he took a baby step forward and uh yeah man i just uh once again just was not happy with his play on saturday um okay so next up <sighs> Deion dawkins what well, man bro come on dude you've been in the league a long time man right long ass time and there is no excuse for jumping off sides there is no excuse for letting guys burn past you it's weird Dion's so weird bro he'll have games where that dude looks like an all pro looks great man and then you know games like this um where he looks bad where he looks just complacent where he looks like he don't want to be out there um where he's just not paying attention right jumping off sides getting beat, playing soft. I don't get it because he. I, we all know he could play better. And I know he knows he could play better than that. But there's times and games where I don't know if his head is somewhere else or he just didn't it wasn't up for the game. Or I, I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea what goes on in this man's mind. But I could tell you it, it's consistent with him. Go back, man. Look at his track record. He has really good games, and then he has some fucking games where you're like, what are you doing, Dion? What is going on right now? Like, why? Why You know this offense. You've been here the longest on this line. Why are you uh, jumping off sides on a hard count by Josh Allen? You should know Josh Allen by now. He's not a new quarterback, right, where you're like, oh, shit, I, you know, his hard count kind of surprised me there. You know it. And yet you're still doing the dumb mistakes. You're holding. You're, you know, once again, penalties are drive killers, man, guys. Right? The Gabe Davis, uh, you know, big pass to Gabe Davis. By the way, Gabe Davis played great. Uh, but anyways, got a first down penalty right back. Can't have him, man. You know, went went to a first down, went turn into like about a third and 30. I mean, with, can't have that happen, man. Cannot have that happen. So stock down for Dion, man. I mean, and, and I don't want to see him play next week. I do not. Um, I need to I need to hear that he's in the film room. I need to hear that uh that 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 he is uh <laughs> taking this shit serious because I don't I don't know what is going on in his head sometimes. But yeah, it's I, I very disappointed. Very disappointed. And then my last uh, guy that I have on this list, guys, and it's a bonus. It is a bonus, and that is head coach Sean McDermott, stock down. Listen, last week he was disappointed with the penalties, said he needed to clean it up, blah, blah, blah. Same same talk, same talk we get. And this week I think we, like, doubled penalties <laughs> from last week. Terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. And once again, I will say, listen, I get it. The players are responsible. They need to take responsibility as well. They do, right? I, I understand that. I'm sure Sean McDermott is trying his best to get things right. But clearly, whatever he's doing isn't working. And, and, and it, it showed this game. 
It was worse this game. And I think he came out, did a press conference uh, after the Steelers lost, said, and they asked him about the, the penalties. And he said, uh, yeah, I thought by, you know, in practice last week, by pulling them out when they made penalties, it was going to work. But clearly it didn't work. I, I, I No, it didn't. <laughs> right? um, and here's my concern. Here's my biggest concern with Sean McDermott heading into this season. And, I, and I've been saying this. This dude has a lot on his plate, guys. He is now calling the defense. He is our head coach. He's now our DC as well, right? And can he juggle both? I don't know. And I, it, it's such a risky play for him to do, um, you know, because he could have went out and got a DC. He could have got a DC in-house to take that that role. Um, and I just hope it doesn't affect his coaching. You understand? And I don't know. Right now, it kind of seems like it's maybe the pressure may be a little overwhelming for him. I, I don't know. I'm not going to speak on that because it's preseason, guys. And once again, I'm going to say this too. And I want to make a point of this because you guys, I'm sure, are waiting to die. You know, you're dying to <laughs> comment below and go, it's preseason, Tommy. You're overreacting. I agree. I agree in a way. It is preseason. And I'm not overreacting. I'm just doing a stock up, stock down on players. Pre Listen, preseason, this, was, this, is, this, this is what this is all about with preseason, right? It's for the players to earn a spot on this 53. It's for other players to knock some rust off. And it's for coaches to evaluate what they got, right? And, 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 and see what they don't, right? And see what they need to address and fix. This is what preseason is all about. I get, I don't care about a win or a loss of preseason. I could give two shits. But when you see guys that are starting, our, our first string players making boneheaded mistakes, when our head coach is is preaching about not making mis like you know penalties you know mistakes, and yet we go into week two and we make double the mistakes and double the pen, you know what I mean? It's not a good look, and that's concerning. The middle linebacker, once again, like we have guys fighting for positions. This is what preseason is all about, right? To see what we got, right? Okay, middle linebacker, go ahead, Dotson, Klein. Bernard, what do you guys think? Right? You can't just, you can't say, well, it's preseason week one. I'm sure they'll figure it out. You can't do that. Guys, figure what out? It's by then it's too late. <laughs> oh, we're week four and we got a middle linebacker problem. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> like, this is what Bean and McDermott are paid to do, guys. They're paid to go. They're paid to evaluate these players and, and 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 address the needs to make this team a better team. You cannot just go in there and going, oh, well, they look bad so far in camp preseason, but we haven't even hit week one. Let's pump the brakes. You can't you can't go about thinking that way. And that's not what their job is to do, right? Maybe some fans can go about thinking that way. And that's cool, man. Everyone has their opinion and their and, and their way of thinking. But realistically, you can't. Okay. You just can't. It, it'd be like think about it. You got a you got a kicker, field goal kicker, who's been terrible in training camp, missing in preseason. And are you just gonna say, well, it's preseason training camp? I'm sure by week one, he'll make his field goals. Why? 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 Why would he? Why uh, really? All of a sudden now he's going to turn it up. So all get my point. So all of a sudden now Dotson's going to. It's just going to. Oh, it's going to click, and he's going to be a totally different player. No, what you see is what you get. This is Dotson. That's his game. It's limited. AJ Klein, he's limited. There is no no getting better. Right. This is not a Gregory Rousseau. Right, rookie, these guys, these aren't guys that you're like, okay, he's raw, he can get there, right? It's gonna take some time, but we're willing to wait because we can see he definitely has the high ceiling. 
These guys don't have that. They are who they are. Like, this is it. <laughs> there is no high ceiling, right? Klein's an aging veteran. He's been around. Like, what you see, what you get with Klein. Dotson, eh. I think Dotson's a huge, huge mistake for them to gamble on. I couldn't believe they even took the gamble. Bernard, I think he's a third-round pick, and they're just, like, hoping that maybe he could be the middle linebacker they, they wanted when they drafted him. I don't know. But, yeah, problem, problem, problem. And then McDermott, going back on McDermott, guys. Um, once again, man, um, I really hope for him and for us as Bill's Mafia, for this team, that he could juggle both uh, defense coordinator head coach because if our defense and this team uh, struggles this season, something it just doesn't go well, there's going to be a lot of people talking, a lot of people talking. Uh, and they're going to be talking about exactly what I'm talking about right now. Um, why did he take that game? Why did he choose to do what he did uh, by taking both positions when he had the opportunity to go out and get a defensive coordinator? Now, if it works, which I'm hoping it does, then great. Fucking brilliant move, Sean McDermott. Love it. But if it doesn't, like I said, oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Do I think he's going to get fired? No. But do I can I see the Bagulos and Brandon Bean talking to McDermott going, yo, uh, not for you as far as defensive coordinator goes. Let's go out and get somebody, put you back just to, as the head coach. You could pay attention, you know, you could put all your focus on head coaching instead of juggling two things, right? I, you know, I'm, I'm just waiting for him on the sideline to be running back and forth <laughs> to his defense, honestly, right? Office, defense, office, right? Just talking to everybody. His head you know, going everywhere. <laughs> and by the way, real quick, what is with the glasses, McDermott? Like that? <laughs> oh, oh, my God. But anyways, man, uh, guys, I want your opinion. Uh, comment below. Stock up. Stock down. Who you got? Did I miss anybody? Uh, if I did, I'm sorry. Uh, but tell me. Leave a comment below. Anyways, Bills Mafia, I love you. And as always, go Bills. I'm out of here. Peace. Sweep the leg. And look at it go. He could go all the way. Touchdown. 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 The bills make me want to kick your heels up and shout. Throw your hands up and shout. Throw your head back and shout. Well, come on now. The bills are making it happen now. Stand up now. Come on and shout. Yeah, yeah.